feel a frustration, a constant whisper that I am no closer to achieving my dreams. I missed that. That's Shelley. Beautiful, isn't he? Just how old are you then? Old enough to know why you are asking. I'm 16. When I met you, I felt alive. Come away with me. Are you really involved with that whoremonger? I have a fire in my soul, and I will no longer allow you or anyone else to contain it. Who amongst you has ever wondered if the dead could return to life? Is that really possible? Reanimation. We've been invited to Geneva by Lord Byron. Would you like to join me in the parlor, Miss Goldwyn? I have no quarrel with you becoming lovers. Do you wish to be with someone else? I no longer see the world and its works as they before appeared to me, and men appear to me as monsters. We are each to write a ghost story. It's a competition. The woman is not intelligent enough to form ideas of her own. What's wrong with you? You, Miss Godwin, have the chance to prove me wrong. So, our group is going to be reviewing Mary Shelley, a biographical drama that delves into the life of the renowned author of Frankenstein. The film explores her emotional and creative journey, focusing on her relationship with poet Percy Bysshe Shelley and the experiences that led her to write her iconic novel. Set in the early 19th century, the movie beautifully captures the gothic atmosphere and the struggles of a young woman navigating love, loss, and literary ambition. Set in the early 19th century, the story center on Mary Wollstonecraft, a British teenager. Mary falls in love with Percy Shelley, a student of her father. Sadly for them, Mary Wollstonecraft family disapproved when she and the poet announced their love for each other. The couple then eloped, accompanied by Mary's half-sister, Claire. Thus, Mary's challenging journey begins. About the actors and actress, um, discuss who did a good job and who didn't. <clears throat> We think the acting in this movie was phenomenal. Every actor and actress nailed each of their roles. By just watching the movie once, you can see that everyone truly understood their characters, down to the mannerism and speech. She says differently. You can see it in her eyes, in her voice, the unmistakable anger and betrayal as she speaks to her sister after she finds out about the affair with her husband. Fanning's ability to convey such emotions aren't only seen in those quiet moments, but also in loud, thrilling moments. Scenes when things come to a boiling point, when Mary gets pushed beyond her limit and everything comes out in a furious outburst. For example, when Mary was trying to get her book published and was only met with rejection, she comes storming home, saying that the only way to get published was to remain anonymous and have Percy write a recommendation for her, not only erasing her as a true author, but also having to use another's reputation to rise up. And it is clear that this outburst isn't just because of her book. It was like the dam which held all her anger towards him burst. He took everything away from her, her family, life, her trust, her brief moments of happiness, and even her baby. Could he not let her have one little thing for herself, just to be recognized for her own work? The ability to convey such a range of human emotions through acting alone is a feat not many can accomplish. That's why we would like to praise Fanning again for her performance. Even if we didn't like the movie, her acting at least made it interesting and engaging. <gasps> Next, we will be talking about what we liked and what we didn't like about the movie. 
So in short, we did not like this movie. While there are some aspects to it that we found interesting and very eye-catching, the other aspects of it are just too hard for us to ignore and genuinely enjoy the movie. Now I will discuss two things that we liked about the movie, and then after that we will discuss two things that we didn't like about the movie. One of the things that we liked about the movie was the backgrounds and settings. Either the gardens, the theater, the house, or the bedrooms, every location felt incredibly real. Like they're not just film sets, but an actual place that you're taking a look at. And I absolutely loved the attention to details in each background. Even though we don't get a close-up of the backgrounds, you can still see that it's fully decorated with books and papers or decorations or like any miscellaneous items. It just adds to the overall feel of the movie, making it feel a little more realistic and lived in. Another thing we liked about the movie was the performance. We thought the actors and actresses did a fantastic job. Every scene was packed with tension and emotion. But we especially liked Elle Fanning's portrayal of Mary Shelley. Even in scenes where she isn't even saying anything, you can clearly guess what she's thinking or feeling based on the actress's expressions alone. Every depressing scene is made all the more gut-wrenching thanks to her performance. And she really makes you emphasize with the character. You feel happy when she's happy. You feel sad when she's sad. And that is really a testament to Mrs. Fanning's acting skills. Next, we will move on to what we didn't like about the movie. One thing we didn't like about the movie was the pacing. Mary Shelley went through so much during her life that it feels like the movie was trying to cram everything in in two hours. You don't really get a deeper understanding of the characters outside their relationship with Mary. And whenever something happens, you don't have enough time to process it before something else happens and you're forced to focus on that instead. This makes the film feel incredibly rushed, like they're just trying to complete a checklist of events rather than letting the events play out in a more natural manner. This checklisting also doesn't give a film an exact climax. Intense scenes filled with emotions are interspersed with slower, calmer scenes, making the film feel like a roller coaster of emotions. Another problem we have with this movie was the romanticization. We think one of the most romanticized aspects of this movie was Mary's and Percy's relationship. There are several scenes dedicated to showing their love for one another, and they are depicted as two poetic souls who are inexplicably attracted to one another, with the whole world seemingly against them. Even in moments where Percy was clearly in the wrong, where he's lying to and cheating on Mary with her own sister, it was still clear that Percy will be the man who she ultimately ends up with, much like her real-life counterpart. Moving on, we will be discussing what lesson can be learned from this movie, what's its theme or moral. And even though we didn't really enjoy the movie, we think that there's still a lesson that can be learned from it. In the movie, you can see that Mary Shelley was faced with various hardships during her life. She somehow endured tragic events that would leave some people broken and discouraged. Yes, she was devastated for a while, but she didn't let those events rule her. Instead, she rose to her sorrow and grew into a wiser person. And so, we think that one of the main lessons that can be learned from the film is perseverance in the face of adversity. For example, when Mary was trying to get her book Frankenstein published, he was met with countless rejections from publishers. They said that her book was too grim and dark, and not befitting of a female author. The only way to get it published was for her to agree to remain anonymous and have Percy write a letter of recommendation, which will make the majority of people think he was the author. Mary begrudgingly agreed to it because it meant her book would reach a wider audience. Thankfully, her persistence paid off, for when her book became popular, Percy came out to publicly state that the author was her and not him, leading to her book getting republished, now with Mary Shelley as its author. 
All in all, Mary Shelley would likely appeal to fans of historical dramas, literary biopics, and those interested in the life and work of Mary Shelley or the Romantic era. People who enjoy films that explore the creative process, personal struggles, and the challenges faced by women in history may also find this movie engaging. However, we would not recommend this film to viewers who prefer fast-paced narratives or those who are looking for a more straightforward, action-driven plot. The film has a more introspective style of storytelling which dives deep into the emotional traumas of the main character, which might not hold the interest of those who aren't particularly invested in period dramas or character studies. The movie is rated PG-13 which means it's suitable for most audiences, though some themes such as death, relationships, and societal pressures may be more appropriate for a more mature demographic. Personally, we found the film to be enjoyable. However, it was a bit hard to process everything that was happening on screen at times. While this could be attributed to the fact that Mary Shelley indeed had a very hectic life, the film could definitely have done a better job at organizing the events in a more digestible fashion. So overall, this is a decent film with strong performances and an interesting exploration of a fascinating historical figure. However, the uneven pacing and overwhelming succession of events detract from its overall impact. As such, our group has decided the film would get a rating of 6.5 over 10. The film is obviously not excellent, however it also has its strong points in acting, costume and set design which gives itself an above average rating. And that is all for our movie review. Right.